Tim, welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. Today we're looking at the Blancpain Le Mans Flyback Chronograph. You can see this 38mm stainless steel flyback chronograph and buy it on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos and click on the card in the upper right hand corner of the screen at any time during this video to see our full listing for this watch with accessories included, high resolution images and naturally complete pricing details. Now on my wrist, 6 and a third inches, 16 centimeters in circumference, this is a traditionally sized men's chronograph, 38 millimeters across the round of the case, not including the pushers of the crown. It has substantial wrist presence in spite of a very compact 48.5 millimeter lug to lug measurement. So the watch definitely looks large, has visual signature that belies its essential size, and yet it's still quite slim on the wrist. This watch measuring only 11.5 millimeters thick with a generously double-stepped bezel, it's easy to slide this versatile timepiece underneath the tightest of dress cuffs. Now, I say the watch has immense presence on the wrist because, quite simply, Blancpain doesn't set a line wrong on this watch. One of the best-kept secrets in high horology, these Blancpain flyback chronographs are absolute gems. First of all, they look spectacular spectacular and they fit a broad range of wrists. Now you can see my wrist being 16 centimeters. I'm nowhere near the lower limit to wear this watch with elegance, proportion, and comfort. I would say that down to about 14 centimeters even, you would be able to wear this watch with the same sense of security and proportion that I'm enjoying now. At the same time, on Blancpain's legendary X71 bracelet, I mean, you can see the tolerances between the links, the watch does feel very substantial, and it has the visual signature of a much larger piece, something along the lines of I would say even a conventional 41 or 42 millimeter watch. It has that much charisma, that much presence, and on the wrist, that much heft. And this is in large part due to a bracelet that is one of the most celebrated in the industry. Let me showcase some of the highlights here. First of all, the finishing is exquisite. It's exactly what you would expect from a high horology house like Blancpain, a flagship of the Swatch Company. And you can see that with satin finish down the center links, polish on the edges, and an incredible system of interlocking intermediate links, this is a very flexible and yet burly looking bracelet. In a lot of ways, it achieves the same flexibility you would get something on the Rolex 5-Link Jubilee, while giving you the solidity and the masculine character of something like the 3-Link Rolex Oyster Bracelet. And of course, on the bottom, it is an ergonomic triumph having broad channels between links, so it will not pinch skin, it will not pull hair, and the watch features a beautifully polished double deployant. So again, if you have a smaller wrist, it doesn't have that one big up and over that you encounter on a single fold deployant that can pinch you down if you want to buckle the watch tight. No such occurrence here and a very low profile partition when this is closed. Again, the only cue to the partition point being the double signature on the bottom. It doesn't have the tall profile of a Rolex Oyster Clasp. You'll also note that the watch has a wonderful combination of a stepped bezel and a high polished case. So even though it is a traditional size, 38 millimeters, the step of the bezel adds strength and character lines that allow this watch to really charm and hold its own against bigger timepieces like the 40 millimeter Rolex Daytona. It's definitely in that aesthetic class. And mechanically, it set the pace for the in-house Rolex Caliber 4130. The Blancpain flyback movements designed for them and executed for them by Frédéric Piguet are some of the gems of modern horology. Originally launching in the late 1980s, these calibers fully integrated automatic winding with a column wheel function selector and a vertical clutch engagement are finished to a standard that, quite frankly, deserves a display case back, but thanks to the solid screwed on case back of this watch, you get all of this plus 100 meter water resistant. So although it's not explicitly a dive watch, it has that kind of hermeticity. Now it also has a flyback chronograph system, so you can reset the chronograph and restart it using only the reset trigger. Now the dial is a special piece because it's broadly loomed, all of the numerals and the broadsword hands at center. So it's a very easy watch to read in low or no light conditions, and it's even loomed on the sub-registers. Now what I'm going to do here, so I'm actually going to move the minutes hand out of the way, so you can see the constant seconds and the almost completely hidden date window at 6 o'clock. I deliberately set it to 6, just to demonstrate how perfectly integrated it is. It's the definition of discrete. I like the practicality of a date. Not everyone likes the disruptive look of a date window on the dial, and this is a solution almost everyone can agree is beautiful, because you only notice the date when you want it. It maintains the symmetry of the dial bilaterally and vertically, and at the same time it does give you the convenience for daily reference. Now you also get automatic winding, 40 hour power reserve. Of course, 
with that vertical clutch mechanism, you can see, I'm going to show you conventional actuation of the chronograph. See how it doesn't jump when I activate it? Watch the chronograph seconds hand. Smooth progression, stops without stagger, resets perfectly to the index at 12. And because you can run the watch continuously with a vertical clutch, it allows you to have seconds hours and minutes at center without any additional hazard to the movement. On a lateral clutch system, you want to use the chronograph sparingly. Not so here. The dial is complex with several different planes. There's a 60 second, 60 minute track outboard. And then inboard of the hours, the watch's dial steps down subtly to an inner dial. It's self-characterized by countersunk sub-registers. There's a lot of complexity within this case, just as there is without. You can see this handsome, versatile, and some might even say best kept secret, the Blancpain Le Mans flyback chronograph and buy it on our website.